welcome to the Dame Allen's Senior School Carol Service in 2020. This year our carol service is online, it takes a different format, partly because the cathedral is still closed, but as you'll be aware, the COVID pandemic continues to change the way we do things. This year our school community has recorded uh, a number of items, especially for our carol service this year. The Dean sends his good wishes, he would normally be here to join us for our carol service. Today in his place I use the traditional opening prayer as our carol service begins. Let us pray. Beloved in Christ, be it this Christmas tide our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels in heart and mind to even go unto Bethlehem and to see this thing which comes to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience to that glorious redemption brought us by his holy child. But first we pray for the needs of the world, for peace on earth, for goodwill among all people, for unity and brotherhood within the church that he came to build and especially in this holy season. Because of all this, we would rejoice in heart. Let us remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick and those that mourn, the lonely and unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus, those who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, we remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but on another shore, in another place, and in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom the Lord Jesus, we together are one. These prayers and praises we humbly offer to the throne of grace. So may the Almighty bless us with his grace, Christ, give us the joy of everlasting life and that fellowship of the citizens above. May the King of all angels bring us in this Christmas tide. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on, a, on them a light has shined. For unto us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government of, and of peace there will be no end. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, 
God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever, fa will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment, when Quirinus was governor of Syria, and all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, 
for he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, for there was no room for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. When the world was dark and the city was quiet, you came. You crept in beside us and no one knew. 
are only the few who dared to believe that God might do something different. Will you do the same this Christmas, Lord? Will you come into the darkness of today's world? Not the friendly darkness, as when sleep rescues us from tiredness, but the fearful darkness in which people have stopped believing that war will end. Or that food will come, or that a government will change. Or that the church cares. Will you come into that darkness and do something different to save your people from death and despair? Will you come into the quietness of this city? Not the friendly quietness, as when lovers hold hands, but the fearful silence. When the phone has not rung, the letter has not come, the friendly voice no longer speaks, the doctor's face says it all. Will you come into that darkness and do something different, not to distract, but to embrace your people? And will you come into the dark corners and the quiet places of our lives? We ask this not because we are guilt-ridden or want to be, but because the fullness our lives long for depends on us being as open and vulnerable to you as you were to us when you came, wearing no more than nappies and trusting human hands to hold their maker. Will you come into our lives if we open them to you and do something different? When the world was dark and the city was quiet, you came. You crept in beside us. Do the same this Christmas, Lord. Do the same this Christmas. Us innkeepers get a bad press, but of course, if only I'd known it was the Son of God, then I would have found room. Yeah, they just needed to say it, and I would have let them in the penthouse. But the way they looked certainly didn't scream divinely appointed. No, they were nothing but poor refugees with no place in my town, and the smell from that donkey, oh, it was enough to make your eyes water. I was worried for my business. I thought they might pinch things from the other guests, if truth be told. 
I have to bear my customers in mind. You know, I've got kids to feed, taxes to pay. In my defence, they certainly didn't look like they'd come prepared for a baby, much less the Son of God and the Saviour of all mankind. But why didn't they hint they were besties with the angel Gabriel? You know, that tends to open a few doors. Oh well, too late now. I've missed my chance to help. Anyway, I need to go arrange, rearrange some dust sheets. We'll get a millionaire in here someday. The headlines today. Channel deaths spark renewed calls for safe, legal routes to the UK. The death of four members of one family, including two children, in the Channel in late October has prompted renewed calls for safe and legal routes to be opened up for asylum seekers trying to reach the UK. The boat overturned in rough waters off the coast of northern France, with a family trapped in the cabin, according to reports. Another member of the family, a 15 months old, is missing, feared drowned, while 15 survivors were rescued and taken to hospital. More than 7,400 people have arrived in the UK from France in boats this year, nearly four times as many in 2019, while seven have died attempting the crossing. The United Nations UK representative has said the government should urgently restart its resettlement scheme, which is supposed to bring about 5,000 refugees a year to the UK, but has been suspended due to the COVID-19 pandemic. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Poor little mite, wrapped in rags and laden straw. Totally unhygienic if you ask me, just thinking of the germs. If only I had been in Bethlehem, no saviour of mine would have suffered such indignities. <sighs> Not if I could help it. I would have made a proper little layette, finest wool and knitted oh, little bobble hat. He would have looked a proper little picture. Only right for the Son of God, you know. But no one bothered to tell me who he was. And how was I supposed to know the difference between God's greatest gift and just another unplanned baby to scavenging teenage parents? Oh well, can't be helped. It's too late now. I've missed my chance. I'll just knit him a nice warm shawl. News just in. That as of December 2020, child poverty in Britain has risen sharply. Whilst relative child poverty rates have remained stable over recent years, there are now 4.2 million children living in poverty, 600,000 more than in 2011 and 12. A report by the Institute for Fiscal Studies has predicted that by 2022, the figure will have risen to 5.2 million. However, they are keen to stress that this was calculated pre-COVID. With the inevitable impact of the pandemic, this figure is set to rise even further. The Children's Society has explained the impact that poverty has on many young people trying to study on an empty stomach, trying to sleep in a cold bedroom, not being able to go out with your friends and constant worry about your home situation can lead to many issues, not least poor mental health. Many of these children succeed, but it can feel like a daily battle. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? Then the king will answer them, truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Those shepherds were well-meaning, I suppose, but a lamb, I ask you, short-sighted or what? The saviour would have been far better off with a whole flock of sheep. That's what I'd have given, if only somebody had actually explained to me that the squawking baby was actually God's son, come to earth to take away our, to take away our sin. Hmm. The whole sin of the world. You would need all the energy you could get to accomplish that. You see, one lamb is a nice idea as a one-off donation, 
but the saviour needs to be sustained. I'd have made sure the lad was well fed for years to come. A never-ending supply of the best scrag end and mutton chops. Never mind fiddling about with loaves and fishes. His, dis his disciples would be able to hand out kebabs instead. One scrawny lamb wouldn't have done that. But I suppose my time has passed. I'll just have to slaughter the sheep and add them to the mutton mountain. You can't afford a glut hitting the market and reducing the food prices, can you? Headlines just in. Food banks all over the UK are reported to be struggling to cope with the demand as unemployment rates rise. Donations to food banks have fallen significantly over the course of the pandemic, and many are now unable to feed those coming through their doors. In 2019 to 2020, approximately 1.9 million people used a food bank in the UK, around 300,000 more than the previous year. The first two weeks of the coronavirus lockdown triggered an unprecedented rise in food bank use as the economy was hit and household incomes plunged, data from hundreds of emergency food aid charities reveals. Similar statistics are now coming in based on usage in the latest lockdown period. With Christmas just weeks away, the outlook for many of the poorest families in the UK, the picture looks bleak. And the king will answer them. Truly. I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. A reading from the Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth.
our virtual carol service for 2020 draws to a close with a short moment of prayer. On behalf of the school community, I wish you a very happy Christmas when the time comes. And until then, in this season of watching and waiting, may you find the space to do all that you need to do. May you find those moments of quiet reflection in which you might discover joy and peace. And for those whom this year especially you may not see in person, may you know their love in your heart. And so as we go about our daily activity, we do so after a short prayer. Heavenly Father, we remember as he came to us as a human, the Son of God scattered the darkness of the world and filled the holy night with his glory. So may the God of infinite goodness scatter the darkness of sin and brighten our hearts with love and with hope. Father, you sent your angels to the shepherds to herald with great joy the Saviour's birth. May he fill us with joy and make us heralds of his great gospel. When the word became flesh, earth was joined to heaven. And so may we know his peace and his goodwill and fellowship with all the heavenly hosts of those who have gone before us. And in this Christmas season, may we know the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this day and always. Amen. <laughs>